Imagine this, a tank that not only can crush through enemy lines with heavy firepower but also carries troops to the front, shielding them from danger as they disembark. It's fast, powerful, and capable of crossing rivers, all while supporting the soldiers it carries with more than just protection. Now what if I told you that this idea didn't come from the West, but from the Soviet Union, during a time of immense military tension between the East and the West? This isn't just a story about another tank or armored vehicle. It's the tale of the BMP series, a line of machines that revolutionized battlefield strategy and changed the course of modern warfare forever. Stay tuned, because what you're about to discover will leave you in awe of Soviet engineering and military genius. To truly understand the impact of the BMP series, we have to take a step back. The year is 1966, and the world is on the brink of the Cold War, with tensions running high between the Soviet Union and the West. In the vast plains of Eastern Europe, armored battles between German forces and the Soviets during World War II had shaped the future of military technology. But as the Cold War loomed, the Soviet Union was preparing for something bigger, a war against the Western powers. Engineers, eager to create the perfect machine for this potential conflict, looked to the past but also forward, envisioning a new breed of vehicle. It was then that the idea of the infantry fighting vehicle, IFV, was born. The goal was to create a vehicle that combined the firepower of a light tank and the protective qualities of an armored personnel carrier, APC. This hybrid would allow troops to stay safe inside while also being able to fight off enemy tanks, infantry, and even aircraft. The Soviet engineers didn't stop there. This vehicle needed to be fast, maneuverable, and even amphibious, so it could traverse rivers and canals without slowing down the advance. Enter the BMP-1, a revolutionary design in 1966 that marked the beginning of the Soviets' quest for the perfect IFV. The BMP-1 wasn't just a tank, it was a true infantry carrier that could rush into battle alongside its soldiers. It had a 73mm smoothbore cannon capable of launching anti-tank missiles, and it could carry eight infantrymen inside while offering them some level of protection. But like all revolutionary designs, it had its flaws. The internal layout was cramped, and the main gun, while powerful, lacked the precision needed to engage modern tanks. Yet, despite these drawbacks, the BMP-1 proved to be a success for the Soviet Union and their allies across the globe. But war, as always, teaches you lessons. The Yom Kippur War of 1973 and the Soviet-Afghanistan War of the 1980s revealed the BMP-1's weaknesses. It was clear that more firepower, more precision, and a better crew layout were needed for the modern battlefield. Soviet engineers took these lessons to heart, and by 1980, they unveiled the next step in the BMP's evolution, the BMP-2. The BMP-2 fixed many of the problems that plagued its predecessor. Most importantly, the engineers replaced the 73mm cannon with a 30mm autocannon, which was far more accurate and effective against enemy infantry and lightly armored vehicles. The internal crew layout was also improved, with the commander now positioned in the turret for better visibility and control. Smoke grenade launchers were added to allow the vehicle to lay down a smoke screen for cover during retreats or advances. The BMP-2 was faster, stronger, and more capable of handling the modern threats of the battlefield. This was a machine built for the future, and it was ready for war. But as history shows us, the need for innovation never truly ends. While the BMP-2 was a significant leap forward, the military world was evolving quickly. The rise of newer anti-tank missiles and more advanced infantry weapons meant that the BMP-2 could soon be outclassed by future threats. Soviet engineers knew they had to push the boundaries even further. The BMP needed to be even more powerful, even more resilient, and even more versatile. In the 1980s, the Soviet Union took a bold step with the introduction of the BMP-3. This vehicle would become the pinnacle of the BMP family and one of the most feared infantry fighting vehicles in the world. Its design combined the best elements of its predecessors, but with a series of upgrades that took it to the next level. For the first time, the BMP-3 was armed with a 100mm rifle gun that could engage modern tanks and fortified positions with ease. But it didn't stop there. The BMP-3 also carried a 30mm autocannon for infantry and light vehicles and could fire the 9M117 Bastion anti-tank guided missile, ATGM, directly through its main gun. This combination of firepower made it a versatile and deadly force on the battlefield. But what truly set the BMP-3 apart was its armor and survivability. The engineers added thicker armor to the hull, ensuring that it could withstand hits from modern anti-tank weapons. It also included explosive reactive armor, ERA, 
a feature that helped the vehicle survive even the most advanced penetrating rounds. Its unique design, with a low profile and reinforced turret, made it hard to hit from the sides, providing excellent protection to the crew and passengers inside. And of course, the BMP-3 retained the amphibious capability that made it stand out from most other vehicles. It could cross rivers and lakes with ease, a crucial feature for the Soviet military's doctrine of rapid multi-terrain warfare. The BMP-3 wasn't just a combat machine, it was a vehicle built for modern warfare. It could transport up to seven infantrymen while giving them the firepower they needed to support the advancing army. The fighting compartment of the BMP-3 featured firing ports, allowing the infantry to engage targets even while staying safe inside. It could fight back against tanks, light vehicles, infantry, and even aircraft. Whether stationary or moving, the vehicle stabilization system ensured that the weapons could hit their targets accurately, no matter the circumstances. Although the BMP-3 was primarily designed for the Soviet Union, its innovative design didn't go unnoticed. Many countries around the world saw the potential of this incredible machine. The United Arab Emirates became one of the largest operators of the BMP-3, with nearly 400 units in service. Other countries, including India, Cyprus and Sri Lanka, also took interest in the vehicle, using it for their own military forces. The BMP-3's legacy lives on in these nations, who still rely on its firepower and protection in their own conflicts today. However, despite its advanced features, the BMP-3 never fully replaced the BMP-2 in Russian service. With the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, budget cuts and political upheaval forced the Russian military to keep both models in service, a testament to the BMP-2's enduring utility. Yet, even as the Russian army began to transition to newer vehicles in the 21st century, the BMP-3 remained an integral part of their armored forces. Now, as we look to the future of armored warfare, the BMP-3 stands as a monument to Soviet engineering and ingenuity. The concept of the infantry fighting vehicle, first introduced with the BMP-1, has been adapted and improved over the decades, and the BMP-3 represents the peak of that evolution. Its combination of firepower, protection, and mobility made it a revolutionary vehicle that continues to serve in many armed forces around the world. So what can we learn from the BMP-3's story? Perhaps it's the relentless drive for improvement that defines military technology. The engineers of the Soviet Union didn't just create a vehicle, they designed a weapon of war that could adapt to the changing face of battle. As we watch new developments in military technology today, we can't help but see echoes of the BMP series, still influencing armored vehicle designs around the world. Before you go, let me ask you, what do you think about the BMP-3? Do you think its design is still relevant in modern conflicts? How do you feel about the idea of infantry fighting vehicles? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to stay updated on more stories like this. Your support means the world to us, and it helps us bring more exciting content your way. Thank you for watching. Thank you.